back in the days before we had transistors and solid state devices, we used vacuum tubes in all of our electronic devices. Now a vacuum tube works very similar to how a transistor works today. It amplifies a voltage. The main difference between a vacuum tube and a transistor is a, vac a, a transistor is a current amplification device and a, a vacuum tube is a voltage amplification device. And how a vacuum tube operates, there are, are some components inside the vacuum tube as seen in this illustration. Now there are several different types of vacuum tubes, the simplest being a diode. A diode is simply a, a cathode and a plate. The next type, uh, and a diode just rectifies AC to DC. The next type of tube is called a triode. A triode is a basic amplifier. This type of tube here, well, let's see this one over here actually on this part of the schematic. This one here is a triode, a 6HA5. Hey, you got a couple components to this. You've got your heater, which provides heat to the cathode. Electrons get emitted from the cathode and they're drawn towards the anode. The anode is supplied with your B+, plus, which is typically anywhere from 160 to about 380 volts, depending on the power of the amplifier. And normally what would happen is your cathode is at ground potential. With respect to the positive voltage on the plate, electrons are going to be drawn from the cathode towards the plate. And what the grid does is the grid controls those electrons. It stops those electrons from escaping the cathode. And how it works is you apply a negative voltage, a bias voltage to your grid. And that negative bias voltage will contain the electrons, keep them all around the cathode, but won't allow them towards the plate. And as that bias voltage gets reduced, it, it will follow your signal. It will allow electrons to move towards the plate. What will happen when they move towards the plate is it will cause the voltage on the plate to drop in according, accordance with how many electrons are arriving at the plate. That simplifies things. If we look back at another type of tube, well, there's several types. There's pentrodes, there's power grid, uh, or, um, focus beam. There's several different types of tubes that have been developed and basically it donates how many different grids you've got. You can have a, a one, a one, this is a two grid uh, tube, this one here. This is actually part of a of a six CQ8 which is a, actually a dual tube. So this is a this is a triode and it's also a dual grid tube. Two halves and there's many many different types of tubes but they all operate under the same principle your grid will control the flow of electrons to the plate and the voltage drop that apply that, that occurs across the plate that's your amplified signal unlike transistors though tubes don't last forever so this unit that we're looking at here is that it's an eco model 666 this was actually one of the later generations of tube testers and this one will actually test transistors as well it has sockets that you can plug a transistor in and it will test transistors. But uh, these were very popular back in the 60s and even into the 70s when, uh, and, and, and earlier, 50s, 60s, 70s, when your TV repairman would go to your house and actually repair your television or your hi-fi set in the house because these units at the time were just too damn big to carry down to the local shop. You know, most of these big console TVs required at least two men to carry them and they were just too big to transport and a lot of times they could be fixed by just replacing a tube or two. In fact, these were so popular that back in the 60s, I remember growing up where every drugstore on the corner had a tube tester and you could actually go in and test your own tubes and they were they were very, very similar to how this one here works. What you do, first of all, is you have to look up the type of tube that you're going to uh, put under test. So they all have this some of them had cards that you flip. This one here has got it built in on a roll of paper and you can just dial in the type of tube that you want. The tube that I'm going to test here is a 6CA7 or an EL34. Audio fools love their tube amps and a lot of musicians will still use a tube amplifier and it's because of the sound characteristics of a vacuum tube amplifier are totally different than a solid state amplifier. So what we need to do here is we have to look up the specifications on here and this is going to tell me what I have to do to set this unit up. So it's going to tell me where to set these levers and it's going to tell me what buttons to press 
and what the reading should be on the meter. So 6CA7EL34, first of all, it's telling me it's 6.3 volt filament. And that's gonna tell me what my grid needs to be set to, what my plate voltage needs to be set to, and what these little levers here need to be set to. So we're gonna show you how this thing's set up. So now that you've seen that, it tells me that 6CA7EL34 needs a 6.3 volt filament. So I go over to the filament voltage adjustment. Uh, it's going to tell me to set it to 6.3 volts. And this unit is not turned on, by the way. I've got it turned off right now. Power switch is over here. And it tells me that I have to set my grid to 15. So then I move the grid control here. And we can set our grid to 15. Our plate needs to be set to 95. Our plate is over here. So we'll turn our plate up to 95. And now it's telling me these are the levers that need to be set. Okay, you got levers 1 through 9 and C. So lever 1 has got to be set to 3. Lever 2, where am I here? Nope. Lever 1's a 1, then it's a 2, then it's a 4. Then it's a three, and then a five, and then it's a six, and a one, 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 one. V has to be set to four, and lever S is set to one. And that will have this unit configured for this EL34. I also have to make sure that I've got my tube tester set for tube because it's got two transistor settings PMP1 and 2 tube and NPN1 and 2 and it actually uses the, the socket up here for tra transistor testing. We just have to make sure we get the tube into the correct socket and there are several sockets but the tubes have all have standardized bases and they're only going to fit in the one socket at least on this tester some of the other testers would have they would have dozens of different sockets on them but they also didn't have all these levers and switches what these switches do these switches configure the socket for the, the wiring of this tube so we find a socket that the tube fits in and we should be ready to test it Okay, so we're ready to test this EL34 tube. Just consulting the user manual here because I haven't used this particular model of tube tester in the past. So we've got all of our switches set accordingly. 6.3 volt filament. Our grid is set for 15. Our plate is set for 95. And we have our lever set. 1, 2, 4, 3, 5, 6, 1, 1, 1, 1. So one, two, four, three, five, six, one, 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 one. Our V selector is set to four, and our S, which is our shunt, is set to one. This is for voltage and, and shunt, for the voltage tap and the shunt resistor for the meter. Now how we go about testing this, there's another series of switches called the leak test. One, five, and eight are the switches, and the merit test is three. Correction, before I go there, I need to adjust the line adjustment. The line setting here, this is for under no load, but when the filament is drawing power, it's going to cause a bit of a load. So what we do is we press the line test button and we adjust the meter or using the line adjust until we get the meter where it's right over, centered over where it says line adjust. So now we've adjusted our line voltage for the correct voltage to test a tube under compensating for the load that the tube puts on the transformer of this tester. So once we've lined up or adjusted the line voltage we can uh, do our leak test. Our leak tests are done by depressing the switches here that are indicated under the leak test. In this case it's 1, 5 and 8 and while we depress those switches we'll press the leak test button and we'll check for leaks. So we have no leak here. 
on five, or one, sorry. The next one we'll test is five. And we get no leak there as well. And the third one we're gonna test is eight. And we'll press our leak test button here. And again, we've got no leakage here measuring on the meter, which is good. We don't have any leaks. So once, I, once we've done our grid leakage test, in this case using button one, five, and eight, and pressing the HK leak test, Now we are going to test for conduction, and that's called the merit test. So we press switch number three, and we pull the switch, the merit test switch. And as you can see, we have nothing. Oh, we have a little bit of gain, but really nothing to, to speak of, because this tube is shot. So let's do the same test. We'll reset it here. Let's do the same test on a tube, which should fare a bit better than the other one. See, I knew this tube was bad. I've got it marked, bad tube. So once we warm up this tube, again, we'll check our line voltage, make sure that our line voltage is good. And then we can do the same test. One, leakage, nothing. This is good. We don't want leakage. Leakage is bad. Five. Nothing there. It's good when the HK leakage isn't pressed, but we don't want any deflection on there when the uh, button is pressed. And now we go to our three, our merit test. And when I pull the merit test this time, you saw the meter jump up. This tube is good. This is our conduction. So that's our good tube, our merit test. Now if I go back to that other tube, without changing any settings on the tube tester, let this tube warm up. We have nothing. You see? Nothing on this tube at all. When we had our eight switch depressed before pressing the HK leakage test, it also didn't show anything here. But back to number three, nothing. Nothing on our merit or our, our, our current test. Go back to the other tube. Let this one warm up for 15 or 20 seconds. And actually, if we pull the merit test while the tube is warming up, we'll actually see the tube come into conduction, as you can see there. There you go. That's a good tube. You can actually hear the transformer humming. It's drawing full power through the tube. And as the tube warms up. So there you go. That's how you test a tube using a good old fashion tube tester. Hope you've enjoyed this informative video and we'll uh, catch you in the next issue.